Thank you very much, uh, dear friends, dear colleagues. Thanks, Jan, for leaving me the piece to speak a little bit because we are running legs. Um, so this is a very critical question, I believe, is the way to uh, detect the, the patients that will benefit, that should benefit from the wearable uh, defibrillator. Uh, after a myocardial infarction or a very severe uh, heart disease, the goal is, of course, to, uh, to treat the initial disease with a, spe a specific treatment, for example, a revascularization in, in a, a case of, of infarction. Second, to optimize the pharmacological treatment. And third, to make a risk stratification for the sudden cardiac death in order to implant the patient that will need a, a definitive ICD. Uh, after myocardial infarction, this uh, cardiac trial has uh, tried to uh, detect the patients having the most important risk of, uh, of death. And for this, they choose a, a score. And if this score, with very simple uh, clinical parameters like ejection fraction, renal insufficiency, uh, clip class, two, three, age, etc., if this score was of more than six, the risk of a, a global death at one year was about 15%. But, very important, half of these deaths were sudden. And even most important, the uh, majority of the deaths were during or within the first three months. Second, when you're doing a medical optimization, uh, for example with the uh, beta blockers, you know that you will have an effect of the drugs, but not immediate effect of the drugs. The effect will be delayed by more or less three months, in which you will have a separation and a, um, a decrease of the risk of death in the patients that are really taking the drugs. But within the three months, the patient is remaining at high risk of having uh, a death. So what uh, could we, what should we expect from a definite ICD? Of course, save lives. But at the same time, the ICD brings a morbidity. Uh, risk of infection, risk of inappropriate shocks, etc. So we have to put everything on the balance in order to choose the best decision or to propose the best solution to our patients. We have looked in, in a French registry during more than 10 years uh, about the risk of complications, early complications, only within the first month after implantation and it was only for primary prevention patients. That means patients that have never had uh, an arrhythmic event before. And we have seen that in this French registry, we have more than 13% of the patients that are having a early complication, and the risk of complication is increasing all along the life of these patients. In addition, all patients will not benefit in the same way of the definitive ICD. We have looked in the same registry of more than 5,000 uh, patients uh, about the Golden Bear score. You all know about the Golden Bear score. This is looking for a, a, a functional class, more than two, age, more than 70 years, QRS, more than one, uh, 20 milliseconds, atrial fibrillation, and uh, renal uh, disease, renal insufficiency, insufficiency. And we have defined six classes, from zero factors to five factors. And what we could see was in the high-risk uh, group of patients, the risk of mortality was five times more than in the low risk of patients with zero, zero, uh, zero parameters of risk. So that means that we have to think about the problem of implanting a definitive ICD in the patients having, for example, a myocardial infarction, but the same for non-ischemic disease, as we have seen before with the Danish trial, for example. And during this risk, in which we have a transient risk, for example, in patients having inflammatory disease or a delayed ICD indication after myocardial infarction, we have a duration of about one to three months in which the patients are very high risk, as we have seen, of having a, 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 a risk of sudden cardiac death. And in this period, of course, the wearable defibrillator has a very important role to play. We have seen already the, the guidelines. I will go uh, faster about that, but we can see that uh, now the place of the wearable defibrillator is 
well defined in these patients during this period of risk before deciding the implementation of a definitive ICD. We have many propositions, and we all know that in all these patients, as we have seen, the place of the device is undoubtable. It's, it's uh, obvious that this device has a role to play. But the problem is how to detect all these patients without leaving many patients out of the selection. This is the risk. The risk is to detect the patient at the beginning. And the same for the HRS consensus. The problem is, okay, we know how to deal the patients after they have been selected, but again, we have to detect all these patients that should, that will, that would benefit from the wearable defibrillator before deciding the best, treat uh, the best treatment for them. And we know that, in addition, this detection of patients has to be very early because the risk, and we have seen this with Gianluca uh, in the first presentation, is at the beginning, just after the infraction, or, or at the beginning that you have detected the myocarditis, for example, or the non-ischemic uh, disease, and in the first three months, the risk is extremely high. So this is in this period that we really have to say these patients need the device, this patient is a low risk, maybe we can survey a little bit, but this patient has absolutely to be protected or not. And for this, I believe that speaking each other with all different specialties about the cardiology, but even with surgeons, et cetera, et cetera, is very important. And this is uh, what we call the arrhythmia team. And the arrhythmia team is to deal these difficult cases of patients in which we have to discuss first how to protect immediately and second, how to treat these patients the best way and decide, and, and decide for example, to implant or not an ICD, to put a resynchronization or not, et cetera, et cetera. Our experience in France, we have the uh, reimbursement of the wearable defibrillator since about two years, a little bit more, and we have, in, a, in a Clinique Pasteur, uh, we have protected 27 patients with the device. Uh, you will see all the different kind of patients. Six patients were after ICD extraction, five after a myocardial infarction with a low ejection fraction, two myocarditis, 11 patients after revascularization, so like in the, uh, the Cadillac trial, and three were non-ischemic, which is a little bit different than in Germany, I was saying before. Above these 27 patients, who indicated the wearable defibrillator? In the six cases of extraction, I did the extraction, so I proposed the wearable defibrillator. It was the arrhythmia uh, guy who decided. In five post-MI, it was the doctor from the intensive care unit in three cases, and in, in two cases, it was the arrhythmologist. For the myocarditis, again, one case, the intensive care uh, uh, doctor. For the revascularization, in seven cases, the hemodynamist, and in one case, if I remember well, it was the surgeon, and the uh, arrhythmologist for the three non-ischemic myocardiopathy. So in total, uh, 16 by the arrhythmologist, four by the intensive care unit, seven by the hemodynamist, but all the cases have been discussed, all, at least between uh, two doctors, two of us, and we have decided uh, the arrhythmologist have participated to the decision of propose the wearable defibrillator. So three cases or four cases, very easy um, to see just which kind of patients we have uh, protected during this period. This is the case of an extraction for endocarditis. This patient was not a pasting dependent patient, but it was implanted with an ICD in a secondary prevention for VT. And we have reimplanted the patient after uh, two uh, weeks of uh, antibiotics from the other side, of course. And during this period, of course, uh, we use the wearable defibrillator to protect the patient. This is a very high-risk patient because he was implanted in secondary prevention. Another case, easy again, 30 years old male patient, diabetes, obesity, so risk factors, acute anterior myocardial infarction, 
NVT in the acute phase, uh, ER the revascularization, and he had an ejection fraction, resulting in ejection fraction of 35%. We initiated at that time the uh, earth failure treatment, and of course at that time we have protected the patient with a, a wearable defibrillator. After two months only, the patient recovered uh, an ejection fraction of 50% without residual myocardial ischemia. I think it's important to check again that you have uh, completely treated the patient with no events during uh, uh, the equipment of the patient, so during this two-month period, and we decided not to implant an ICD in this patient. Another case from uh, my French friend and uh, colleague from uh, Brest, uh, Jacques Mansouati, who had a patient of 62 years old, male patient, primary prevention in this case, ischemic myopa uh, myopathy of less than one month after myocardial infarction, a low ejection fraction, and they decided to place a live vest. After 30 days, so one month, the patient had a syncope, with, which as you can see here, uh, uh, a VT, so this is in French, but I think that you can understand what it happens. So uh, the device is beginning to detect the arrhythmia, so uh, the patient hears the alarms, and uh, there is a liberation of uh, the blue gel, and uh, uh, an external shock of the device that uh, reverted the uh, rhythm to sinus rhythm and saved the patient. So the, these patients received ultimately an ICD, definitive ICD, and finally he went uh, for a heart uh, uh, transplantation. Last case, 39 years old, again, a young patient, male patient, uh, dual chamber ICD implanted in 2007 for a right uh, ventricular uh, disease, arrhythmogenic disease, uh, secondary prevention, ejection fraction normal of uh, left ejection fraction of more than 60%, the right ejection fraction was low of 30%, ICD extraction for endocarditis in this case, again after one month, same problem, the patient had a VT, very fast VT of more than two, uh, bits per uh, 200 bit per beats per minute. Detection of the arrhythmia, external shock, and again, sinus rhythm. This patient had finally an SICD implantation after antibiotic treatment for his endocarditis. So, in conclusion, our uh, follow-up of these patients, of the 27 patients equipped with a, a wearable defibrillator, we have finally implanted 50% only of them with a definitive defibrillator, of which six were the ICD extraction. So that means that the half of these patients were patients having a clear indication, already clear indication of a, a defibrillator but all the other patients were protected during this period without needing a definitive ICD, which is exactly what we can see in the WIRIT uh, trial. Uh, about 50% of the patients are finally uh, implanted with a definitive ICD. So, in conclusion, patients are at the highest risk of sudden cardiac death, death in the first month after a myocardial infarction. The majority of mortality in these patients after revascularization occurs in the first three months. The wearable defibrillator is a very effective tool to protect these patients from the sudden cardiac death, which aim to protect them against that. And the tools that, like the HRS consensus screening protocol can identify those patients at the higher risk. What I believe is that the early patient's detection is extremely important also the risk evaluation of these patients, the medical community awareness, and I, I would say the first doctor to see the FDS is very important because in fact, it's crucial that the first doctor that will see the patient will detect the indication. It's the most important, but at the same time, it's also important to have people to discuss the indication and the link between the first doctor to see and the arrhythmia teams that can be virtual and very flexible, not only a, a, a very big, specific arrhythmia team it can be virtual, but it's very important to have this uh, possibility to discuss every indication. Thank you very much.